at the hour here, so we'll get started. Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. I am Nicole Lapworth, the Partner Marketing Specialist at NCHOUT Interactive, and I'm really excited to have Brian Ford on with us today from Message Media to discuss the new texting call center. Before jumping in, I do want to let everyone know that we will be recording today's session, and we'll also send out the webinar recording and slides to everyone in attendance. Uh, if there are any questions, you can go ahead and enter them into the questions box right into the GoToWebinar interface, and we'll take all questions at the uh, conclusion of the webinar. And without further ado, I will go ahead and pass it over to Brian to give a brief introduction into Message Media. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Um, a little bit about Message Media. So uh, we've been around about 16 years, founded in 2000 um, in Melbourne, Australia. We have a little over 20,000 customers worldwide. Um, a couple things that set message media apart over and above you know, other competitors out there. Um, number one is reliability. So we have a state-of-the-art global routing engine um, that enables customers, businesses, to send messages um, to any destination around the globe. Um, and number two, we have uh, round-the-clock support. So we have offices in the United States, uh, Australia, UK, and New Zealand. And with that follow the sun uh, mentality, we're able to give our customers round the clock support elsewhere. Um, one thing about uh, our success, and this is specifically true in the, in the US, is, is our success by partnership. So with partners like Eng House, we're able to um, sell our SMS gateway through you know, feature rich software applications. Um, other examples of other software applications that we're embedded into, security, marketing, government, financial services, utilities, and many more. Um, one quick under the hood, if you will, uh, on, the, on the reliability aspect, um, because sending text messages is actually a little more complicated than some think. Um, one thing that we do that others don't, um, so essentially there's multiple upstream connections that we, that we connect to, um, and these are major aggregators uh, that go downstream to carriers like the Verizons and the AT&Ts. Uh, we heartbeat those networks for any degradation. So essentially, when you send a text message through our routing engine, if there's any degradation or delays upstream with one of those aggregators, we automatically fail over to a clean route, if you will. Uh, in other words, we provide customers an eight-lane highway versus a, a dirt road, if you will. Awesome. Thanks for that, Brian. So what we wanted to do before jumping into everything is just take a quick poll to see who is on today. Um, it's just kind of a fun generational poll, so we're going to go ahead and launch that here. And you should be able to see it in your GoToWebinar interface, so there's just two options. If you can quickly check one, and it will help us gauge uh, who is on. And while you're, while you're answering that question, um, it, it is very relevant for what we're doing today is, is basically the, the generations and, and why text messaging is becoming more prevalent and more necessary within businesses to consumer interaction. Um, if any of you out there can name the band at the top of this page, um, shoot me an email directly and you'll get a thousand free text messages. I love that. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and close that poll. And Jess, are you able to share with us um, the results there, just so we can speak to them? Well, All right, it looks like um, she might be on mute here. So we'll just go ahead and move on, but thank you for filling out that poll. And the one thing that's really important is basically we broke it up into two. I and mean, obviously everybody knows about the Gen Xers, the, the baby boomers, the millennials, um, even Gen Zers, which is the new one, uh, people born after 2002. Um, essentially, if you were born before 1980, um, typically you like social media. You're moved by images and graphics rather than words. Um, so typically those folks text less often um, than that of those born after 1980, which is the millennials and the Gen Zers. Um, the reason why this group is so important and the reason that, you know, why we're having this webinar and we're, we're communicating with companies all around the globe, the necessity to communicate via text message is because these folks make up the largest group in the workforce. Um, anybody born after 1980, uh, they're fast paced. Uh, they want information instantly. Uh, they want to communicate exclusively via text and instant messaging. 
Um, long story short, they'd rather um, be head down uh, in the screens of their, their phones rather than talking to somebody face-to-face -face through or even through emails uh, or landlines and things like that. So that's, that's why it's so important to, to adopt text messaging. Over and above that, so you know, we 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 talked about people after 1980s. This is this is basically the reason why companies need to get out of the the notion of becoming customer focused. I think every company out there says, "Hey, we're customer focused. We're focused on the customer." Uh, now it's really becoming customer obsessed, um, and the reason is you know social networking out there, um, the squeaky wheel effect, if you will. Um, they're they're people have more power now than they ever have had in, in the past impacting a business. So for instance, you know, how many of you out there Yelp before you go to a restaurant? How many of you use TripAdvisor before staying at a hotel? Well, the reality is uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent um, that you do check what people are saying about a business, whether it's a service provider, a landscaper, a pool company, whatever it is, you are checking those things online before you use those services. So uh, one industry in particular that's, that it's really had an impact is healthcare. So um, bad care ratings for, health, uh, for hospitals, uh, high readmission rates, basically means bye-bye to insurance payments. So hospitals in particular, um, any healthcare facility is really needing to keep that sticky consumer engagement, make sure that the, the customers have warm and fuzzies at all times, to make sure that they do not come back in for the same issues and make sure that they do have good ratings. So it's essentially taking those, you know, the, the people that typically post online, it's a lot of ones, right? It's a lot of one stars uh, for bad performance um, or the five stars if it's over and above, um, you know, what's, what's being offered. Uh, it's trying to get those ones obviously into a better, into a better uh, area, so. Awesome, thanks Brian. So to go along with what Brian was saying, we have these stats that exactly show what he was showing there is 81% of consumers find it frustrating to be tethered to a phone or computer while waiting for customer service help. So right now with a new generation of call center customers that are coming in, they don't want to be on, on a phone, they don't want to talk to someone, they don't want to be waiting, they want that instant gratification of being able to easily text someone and get a response. And even more alarming is that 89% of, per of customers admit that they would leave a company after a bad customer experience. And I know this is true for me and it really co companies just can't afford to be having you know, customers like this leaving. So it, with, with a solution that's so easy to be able to retain those customers and create that warm and fuzzy good experience, um, there's really no need to be losing those, those customers. Yeah, a couple of things to, to add to that. Um, just um, a couple of great stats that you know, in, in doing research, um, there are a couple of great ones out there. And one is 64% you know, of consumers with uh, texting capabilities do prefer to use texting over voice as a customer service channel. Um, and 86% of consumers will pay more for better customer experience. Um, and, and really, the, the beauty of text, texting with customers is that if it's built properly, it automates, again, the, the constant communication necessary to make fee people feel good about the relationship with you, the business. Absolutely. So the big challenge is, and Brian spoke to this a little bit, is how can businesses meet the demands of this new type of customer while also maintaining their existing customer service call center? That's you know the big challenge now. And that brings us right into our second poll where we want to see how many of you are communicating via two-way text messaging with one of your service providers. So we'll go ahead and launch that poll quickly here. And once you see that pop up, um, you can go ahead and click one of the, re the options there. We'll give you a few seconds. And while you're answering that, you know, just a, a couple, you know, it, obviously I'm in the business, I pay attention to what companies are doing out there, whether it's utilities or government or uh, banking and finance. I pay attention to how they're using that, uh, SMS in innovative ways. So just a couple things that I've noticed just in the past year. Um, I'm now receiving billing reminders, uh, service outage alerts, and appointment reminders from one of my utility companies. Um, I'm now getting two-way SMS messages um, from a bank customer service rep when there's any suspicious activity on any of my accounts. 
Um, it's usually the wife doing online shopping, but um, um, I'm now getting shipment notifications for things that I buy online. So, for example, if if the package has now arrived in the Atlanta center and it's due to arrive by tomorrow at 5 p.m., um, those those alerts you know typically went through email and I never read them, but now they're coming via text message. So I know, hey, if there's a if there's a something that's delaying that shipment, I don't have to call into the call center. It's already been alerted to me. It has an embedded URL where I can track the package or whatever it is. Um, and and one, one real good one that, Inch House in particular, is um, when, you, when I'm on hold with a cable or cell provider, um, there's an IVR option that gives me the option to get a text back when a customer service rep is free instead of waiting on hold. So I think that that's, that's a beautiful one that, that most companies should adopt. Um, it, it eliminates the need to, to stay on hold for you know, uh, 10, 15 minutes. If there's an option within the IVR to say, hey, we're going to text you back uh, when a CSR is available, uh, I, think it, I, think it's, I think it's a beautiful use case. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. So what we'll do right now is close the poll, Jess, if you want to close that. And if you can quickly share the results, I'll put myself on mute and give you a couple seconds if you could just let us know how many are and aren't communicating via two-way text messaging. Sure. So it looks like here the majority of people are not communicating via text message. We have 63% who are not and 37% said yes, they are. Awesome. Thanks for that. That helps us bridge right into our next slide here. That is a great segue. We're glad that those numbers uh, ended up the way that they did because it it bears out uh, when we when we looked at studies. Um, unfortunately, well, there's there's a it means that there's a lot of growth potential, right? Um, for whatever reason in the U.S. and maybe it's because of the the um, the nature of SMS. People traditionally have thought SMSs um, need to be. Uh, between you know two people and, and, and not necessarily business, the the whole spam notion in the U.S. is probably a reason for that. Uh, but more and more, you know, the the covers are being lifted off of that notion. And if you look at this graph, um, it's it will be turned upside down in the next five to ten years. So if, if, as you see at the top, email, voice calls on on mobiles, voice calls on landlines, face to face, those will be towards the bottom of the list in the next five to ten years. And that's because, again, millennials are driving the need for um, companies to communicate uh, via text message, instant messaging, video chatting, um, social networking. Those are all becoming the major communication channels for businesses uh, and their consumers. Uh, and face-to-face -face landline voice, for, for better or worse, um, they're just not getting the responses uh, that they traditionally did. So why SMS? Um, you know, some of this may be redundant, um, but I think it's very important to understand why SMS. You know, over and above any other medium, uh, even application-to-person messaging, so IMs and things like that. Why SMS has such great stickiness factor? Um, the ubiquity, right? Uh, everybody has a smartphone, um, and now most text packages. Uh, are unlimited, so there's really no need to to be ca cost conscious from a consumer perspective. Um, when it comes to SMS, uh, read rates. If you compare read rates of SMSs compared to voice calls, direct mail, email, um, you're talking a 98% open rate, um, and 90% of text messages are read within the first three minutes. You'll never come close to that in any other medium. Um, obviously, as everybody knows, landlines have been scaling down over the past um, decade. Um, cell phone usage has gone up. Um, and, and with that, a couple great stats. 64% uh, of consumers prefer text messaging over voice, and 77% of consumers, especially in that millennial group, um, are likely to have a positive perception of a company that has uh, text messaging capabilities. So um, I know what I do when I do get a call from an 800 number or a number that I don't know, I don't answer it, uh, and I'm assuming uh, most people are like that, and it's the same way with email. Unless it's a bill or something like that, I very rarely um, open emails um, if it's not deemed important. So um, automating, again, that customer experience is the key here. So when to text. Um, you know, this is, this is one that could get 
you know, pretty muddy if we allow it to because there really are so many use cases for text messages. A lot of times when we're talking to customers, we, we try to start with one or two killer applications, if that makes sense, um, rather than going down the rabbit hole of, well, we can do this, well, we can do this, because you really can muddy the waters with how many things you can do um, from a business to consumer perspective. So just a couple really good killer applications here um, within the call center. Proactive outbounds, so appointment billing reminders are great. Changes to orders or purchase statuses, delivery notifications, um, those are all great use cases. Um, inbound, so when a, when a customer um, solicits the, the SMS or they're the ones that, that start the chain, um, some great use cases are service questions, order refills, um, promotions, discounts, loyalty rewards, um, and as we'll get into a little bit later, the two-way conversations, especially within the NGHOS platform, it's fantastic. Um, you get that customer service exchange, you get the audit trailing, uh, the previous conversations, uh, you can make and confirm reservations, uh, and again, the bottom line is that sticky consumer engagement with little to no cost uh, and or resources within the call center. So one, one quick note on, on promotions. Discounts. This is one that's gaining uh, some steam um, lately, um, and, and an example of it would be you know, to text the word free to one two three four five for ten percent off your purchase over fifty dollars or something like that. There are companies that are you know putting these in the kiosks and things like that uh, within the stores, or they're doing it on the website to get more and more interaction via text messaging. Um, and another one that's gaining steam is the the text to pay options. So. Um, it's great for cash flow, number one, if you can get invoices paid quicker, um, even collections is, is, is a great uh, way to use text messaging. Um, we recently did a, uh, a, a deal with the state of Pennsylvania. They were having a hard time getting paid with, with child support uh, enforcement. So they came to us and they said, is there a way to supplement outbound calls for child support enforcement with text messaging? Um, and within three months, they were able to increase the child support payments over 350%. So great use cases, um, depending on your business, healthcare, security, um, insurance, business, uh, financial services, there's, there are tons of things you could be doing uh, from an outbound, inbound, or two-way perspective um, to increase sales and, and um, increase ROI. So, um, so with that, uh, you know, use cases is, is always the first thing we like to get into with, with our customers. And the, the next thing is, is SMS 101. The, the reality is there's a lot of customers that just don't know much about text messaging. So uh, we try not to get too far under the hood with the, the technical uh, ramifications and, and, and how sophisticated it really is to get a message from you know, Des Moines, Iowa to you know, uh, the Netherlands, um, because it is pretty sophisticated uh, in a matter of, you know, three to four seconds. Um, but just a couple things within SMS uh, 101, if you will, uh, long codes. Um, this is, everybody out there has a long code. I have a long code when I text, um, you know, my friends, uh, we're all using peer-to-peer -peer traffic. It's long codes that you're sending out to. Um, if you do Uber, Uber has a, a, a big, a huge pool of long codes, uh, and when you when you get that message on arrival, your taxi has arrived. That's what you're getting that long code, or that's what you're getting that message over is that long code. Uh, with long codes, there are broadcast limitations. So um, with that, in the United States specifically, we've basically segmented the traffic into um, short codes. So that's the you know the one, two, three, four, five numbers that you get from your bank. Um, or you know, uh, or retailer or whoever it is for promotions. Those are typically sent over short codes. Great thing about short codes: high uh, high volumes are great uh, over short codes. Uh, two distinct differences between dedicated short codes and shared short codes. With message media, we've basically bought uh, bundles of short codes that our customers use, um, and you know, you don't have the cost of uh, of getting your own dedicated short code but you know there are companies out there that that do want that isolated traffic um, a couple other things that are sort of new to the industry but they they're great bells and whistles uh, MMS so picture messaging is now becoming very prevalent uh, it's great for service tech calls so for instance if you have a, a technical team um, wouldn't it be great to have the consumers just take a picture of the back of their you know module whatever it is maybe it's an entertainment center or something like that um, and, and text it in to the service tech and they can say, okay, I can help you out with that issue. 
Um, one other area that's, that's becoming um, more prevalent with, um, with the MMS is real estate agents. So now real estate agents are, tech, are putting on their, their signs outside of houses, you know, text house 16 to, to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the sign, and they're actually able to get and receive MMS messages with interior photos of the house, um, all the websites containing the listing info instantaneously. So that's another great, uh, great use case. A um, couple other things here, text-to-speech, I mean, that's basically just an IVR. Uh, you, know, you send it out via text and it goes to a landline and, and it's able to speak to the customer <coughs> over, that, over that IVR. And um, landline and 800 enablement. This is, this is another thing that's gaining a lot of steam. A lot of companies do not want to get rid of their current 800 number or local number. Well, we're able to SMS enable that. So you keep it with the existing um, voice um, company. So if you have it with the voice company, we simply port over the SMS capability and you're able to send and receive two-way SMS messages over that existing landline or 800 number. So. I'll, I'll add this about pricing um, because it's up there. Uh, traditionally, um, text messaging is a pennies game, right? So um, in the U.S., you're really talking, you know, a penny per transaction. Uh, if it's high volume, you're, you're under one penny per transaction. Um, globally, every country is different. So if you go to Australia, it's, it's more likely you'll be in the 5 to 10 cent per message range. Uh, Germany's, you know, up there as well, you know, 10 cents. It really depends on where you're sending the messages to, but you know, internationally, it's anywhere from a penny to you know, 12, 15 cents in some of the high, high cost countries to send a message. So a little 101. So you know, the financial impact, uh, and this again is, is pretty easy to illustrate when we talk to customers. Um, anytime you can uh, eliminate an inbound call center uh, call, you're going to make money. Uh, and the more, than, the more and more you can keep your customers feeling warm and fuzzy about the relationship, uh, the more that you're going to build that brand loyalty, um, increase sales, increase renewals, whatever it might be. Um, I mentioned print mail earlier, huge, huge uh, ROI in, in reducing print mail. If you can get people to uh, adopt text to pay options, um, or anything that would uh, keep mail from going outbound, you're going to make a lot of money because, as you know, uh, print mail costs a lot to send. Um, so um, in the automation aspect, so multi-channel automation, anytime you can, you can um, bundle together voice, SMS, email, social media, and rely on those other mediums other than voice um, to get things done, self-service, if you will, um, you're going to make a lot of money. And here's a, a good example. Obviously, if you, if you have 5,000 service calls a month and you can eliminate uh, some of those service calls, you're saving you know, thousands of dollars per month and hundreds of thousands of dollars annually using text messaging. Awesome. So now let's see some of this in action, right? We talked a lot about some use cases, and there are a few ways that you can utilize the SMS system with Edge House. So this first one will be with our communication center um, software, and TouchPoint uh, is going to be the interface that we use for that, so if you're not familiar. So what happens is there are a few ways that we can handle SMS interactions, but it's just like any other media queues in our interface touch point. So when the agent is logged into an SMS queue, we can deliver that SMS message straight to them. So they're either get a pop-up notification that will appear, or it can be delivered right to their interaction window, and the agent can choose to accept it like is shown on the screen. So if I were just the agent, I could press accept, and this is an example of a telephone, but it would be the same exact way for an SMS. It would pop up with this interaction window for them where they can see all information um, of the SMS. Like uh, Brian mentioned earlier, you can see any history from that contact, um, previous interactions, so that you really have that two-way interaction and it's not just, okay, I got this SMS, I'm going to start giving information, I have to ask them information from right from the start. You have all of that history with you, so it's really that personal touch and they feel like they're actually talking to someone who knows about their history, which is nice. So moving on, the agent can 
see in their queue, this would be their view. Um, they can see right in their queue SMS. Uh, what's nice is that they can see how long people have been in that queue, so they can filter by longest wait. And again, this is in our touch point interface. So again, this is creating that ideal customer experience where you're getting to those customers that have been waiting the longest first, just like you would do with a call, so that they're not getting angry. You really create that nice customer experience. And finally, it's also really nice because within that interface, the agent's able to easily click and send an SMS. They can either send their own uh, message or they can also select phrases that are set up previously in that interface. They can click on it and press insert and it's a really easy and fast way for that agent to send a message, which is awesome and, and obviously saves them a lot of time if they're doing a lot of these. And once they press close, it'll go ahead and close that and go right back to the touch point interface. So no multi-screen clicking. And one thing there, Nicole, they're, they're also, are they able to transfer? So if you have a, a CSR yep. that's busy. Yeah, absolutely. So that's another really nice thing. So if you see someone's in that queue for a long time, you can easily transfer it to another agent. And like I said, they get all that history. So it's not like they'll be starting from ground zero. They'll be able to see, okay, they talk to, uh, Nicole Lapworth on this date, this is the history, and they're able to just pick it up right where the other person left off. Absolutely. And then I'll go and show another example here. So this is in our, communica uh, our communications portal uh, product with the outbound notification example. And as you can see, we have the main interface here where you can manage the messages, the schedules, templates, etc. So here, you know, as a use case, I'll say that we're dealing with a university that has an emergency with a tornado coming, and they need to let all of their students know to seek shelter, get to somewhere safe. You know, one of those very important emergency situations where you need to get out information fast. And I know where I attended school, Michigan State, they had this same situation, and we would get messages all the time, which was nice and makes you feel a little bit more safe. Um, but in this interface, you're able to easily schedule messages. Um, excuse me. So. Didn't pull up right one there. There we go. So you're able to easily pull up an execution list. So a lot of schools already have an emergency list that they email or call out on. But here, obviously, when we have an SMS message, it's really easy to just pull up the execution list, say that we want to send this certain message to everyone within that list, and it will easily send it out to the student body. And what's really nice is that once we've sent out that message, we can see the, pro the progress of that message. So obviously with emergency notifications and things of that sort of nature, it's really important to make sure that the message went through, everything went okay, and right in that, um, that same screen, you're able to see how the message is sent and the progress, which is huge. And taking it a step further, what Brian had kind of talked about earlier, um, you know, being proactive in your business. Let's say that a tornado did come through to this university. What an insurance company could then do is utilize the same two-way messaging and send those students a SMS saying, hey, we hope you're okay with this recent tornado. If you had any damage to your belongings, you can reply start to start your insurance claim. And that's an easy, personalized way to reach out to your customers, make them feel that warm and fuzzy, as Brian said, and also start getting money for your business because you're making it so easy for them to start an insurance claim with you and get the ball rolling, which is really nice. Yeah, that's a great, um, something we didn't mention before was keywords. So keywords are, ver are, are a very important part of our business and, and you can definitely get responses. It's not just the normal, you know, help and stop replies that you get from consumers. You can, you know, become clever in your keywords and get those inbound messages and isolate those keywords into separate buckets uh, in your queuing or, you know, whatever you, you might want to do. Um, she mentioned a couple really good use cases there and, and even, over and above that, um, utilities, municipalities, HOAs are all using text messages now for you know, service incidents, road closures, things like that. Um, banking and investment companies. So anyone out there that gets quarterly prospectus summaries, um, you know, wouldn't it be great to now just get those via text message with an embedded you know, uh, link that you can get into to see you know, shareholder info and things like that. Um, promotions, loyalty perks, we mentioned those before, those are also great um, ways that you can outreach your customers, um, increase that loyalty brand, things like that. So. Awesome. Thanks for adding to that, Brian. 
So um, just to wrap it up here, I know we're right um, almost to our 30-minute mark. We just wanted to get a poll to see how, um, you know, after we discussed everything, what are you interested in moving forward? We've obviously spoken to a lot of case studies, um, a lot of different ways that you can use SMS, and we just wanted to um, quickly launch a poll to see if you wanted to get more of an in-depth demo moving forward. You know, we're happy to always do personalized demos. If you see a need now, you know, as Brian was talking, if you don't have this sort of tool at your fingertips, you will be behind moving forward just given the generational changes that are coming and the changes with that new uh, call center customer. So there might not be an interest now, but in the future we always like to reach out and make sure that we're being proactive. So we'd appreciate if you could go ahead and quickly fill that in for us. Yeah, and one thing I'll add there is, is, is while you guys are filling that out is, is again, we are, we're very consultative, um, uh, especially with our partnership with Ench House. Um, Ench House sort of comes first with message media. So whenever a customer of Ench House um, needs something or has a question, maybe it's compliance related, best practices, um, technical integrations, how does this work, um, how do we phase this out, that type of stuff, we are always there. Um, to be subject matter experts, if you will. We know the SMS game. Um, you know, we've been doing it for 16 years. And, um, you know, over and above that, you know, we, we, we offer free trials. So anyone on the call, um, if you guys want to eventually kick the tires on SMS, we uh, would be happy to set you up with a free account, um, you know, give you a free consultation and uh, let you get started. So. Absolutely. So we'll close that poll. Thank you, Jess. Um, and at this point, like Brian said, um, we did have our we do have our information up here in case you want to reach out. Like he said, we're always happy to answer any questions offline, um, do any specialized demos, retrials, that sort of thing. So you can always uh, feel free to reach out. But we will take questions at this time. So Jess, if you're able to get started with some of those, and Brian and I will answer them as best we can. Sure thing. So let me just uh, see some coming through here. We can always take more in-depth ones offline, Jess, so if there are any that are getting too into the nitty-gritty, we can always uh, reach out to those personally. Sure. So um, I've got one coming through here that says, so does this work with Cinelect 8.0? And if so, how is the interaction key? Yeah, so Cinelect is actually the old version of um, InChow's products. So it does work with it, but you would need to do an upgrade to that solution. So I can reach out to the person that sent that and send the information. Okay, great. Um, do we get an agent-wise SMS report? So are you able to elaborate on that? Yeah, um, I can take that. I'm not totally sure. Yep. Did you mean agent-wide yep. or agent-wise? I'm assuming, just, I'm assuming that's just you know all the agents and you can get summarized reports. I'll speak to to our gotcha. reporting uh, functionality. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assu you know because we obviously this solution's been ingested via API and all the functionalities of that API have been uh, ingested within the the multiple um, Inch House um, portals. Um, those you know the full data re reporting capabilities. Uh, message sent, message received, message failed, all that kind of stuff, uh, timestamp, um, sender um, information, receipt information, all that stuff is, is captured by us, and we obviously push that stuff back to the Intel's platform. I'm assuming, uh, and again, we can we can obviously get a, a, an Intel sales engineer on the line to make sure that you guys have full data um, layouts of what's actually brought back in from a reporting perspective. My assumption is all of those data fields, um, you know, especially from, a, from an agent uh, perspective, you know, how many messages did this agent send? I'm assuming that's what you're getting at. Um, how many were failed? How many, how many received? That kind of stuff. All that stuff will be on the back end. But that's yeah, definitely so one that we need to elaborate. Yeah, as we saw in communications portal, you could have that general tab, um, but we'll look into it to see if you can get it by agent. And I know with communications, uh, center specifically, you can get it and you can uh, create reports, like customizable reports, to be specifically what you want to see. So if you wanted to do it by agents, you could definitely do it within that interface. Great question. 
All right, now we have somebody asking, um, can we create message templates? Yeah, so that was actually um, what we showed a pretty quickly, but within Communication Center, you can create those phrase or the keywords and the phrases where the agent can already have those pre-created messages where you can just insert them into the SMS. So yeah, you can really easily do that. Yeah, yeah almost like a mail merge uh, process yeah. where you can you know, create templates and, and uh, especially on the outbound functionality if you want to send it out to a lot of people but have it personalized, you definitely have those, those capabilities. Okay, great. And we have somebody asking um, about the pricing structure. Yeah, so I mentioned, you know, traditional, and I don't want to get too far into the weeds with this because we have morphed pricing into, you know, some more traditional models in other verticals like security and things like that where, you know, these customers want sort of annual licenses that cover unlimited messaging and, or, or per, per user concurrent licenses that, that cover a, um, a security person, you know, at, at a couple dollars per month or something like that. We, we have the ability to do that. Um, with Enchouse, it's, it's very much a volume-based game. So as I mentioned, you know, in the U.S., you're talking, you know, uh, penny, pennies per transaction. If it's, if it's low volume, uh, if it's high volume, you're really looking at, um, you know, sub one penny uh, per transaction. And what we do is we basically get forecasts. We can, we can put that into an annual license fee that covers you for, you know, for instance, 500,000 messages. You just buy a prepaid bundle package of 500,000 messages at an agreed upon price and we, we sort of handle it as an annual license fee. Um, and if you go over, we just charge you per message or we just issue a, a, a new purchase order. But, you know, it, we're, we're, easy, we're basically uh, nimble, if you will. We can do, you know, post-pay, pre-pay, doesn't matter. All right, were there any more questions, Jess, or just so uh, we can uh, address offline? Yeah, sure. Um, let's do, what are the impacts to NPS with text versus traditional channels? Mm. Net promoter scores, that's a great question. Um, I'd have that to is one that, that. yeah, I, I'm going to have to do some homework with that. Um, I know that uh, obviously it has a, a very positive impact. Uh, we, we keep close track of our own internal uh, NPS scores and they're, they're really high, but um, how that impacts, how texting impacts NPS. I'll give you an example, I mean, maybe it's not NPS, but um, healthcare in particular is a, is a really impactful um, as far as, you know, uh, ratings. Um, so there's different rating systems within the healthcare community um, and texting um, absolutely has a, a, a great impact on keeping those um, I guess the, the equivalent of NPS scores um, very high. So we can get we can dig down into exactly the impact. Um, I don't have that offhand, but we can do that. Yeah, we'll get back with you on that one. Okay, great. Well, that seems like all that we have coming through right now. Questions. All right. Really good. Yeah, thank you for feeling those, Jess. I really appreciate it. And um, any other ones, if you want to send them our way, as I said, our emails are there. If you think of anything um, a couple hours from now or a couple days from now, we're always happy to answer any questions and jump on a call. So with that, um, just thank you so much, everyone, for coming today and joining us. Hope you really enjoyed the webinar. And as I said, we'll be sending out the webinar recording and slides uh, to you all so that you'll have that to review later as well. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.